no one's ever sat me down and told me what a bank is or what a bank does or what its function is, but I could tell you all about general equilibrium theory, which is very abstract and not really applicable, um, and we think that that's pretty backwards. Students were coming to our classes, and this is especially the case of students who sort of growing up years were in the, in the teeth of the financial crisis. They were drawn to economics because they thought economics was going to give them the tools to understand what, what was going on in the world. And they wouldn't seem to be given any way of linking their studies with their need to answer these questions. I'm a mature student and I had read a lot about economics and I came to university with this idea from all of the things that I'd read of what economics was and what, what academia was and I came here and I was so shocked. There's such a detachment about what the public think economics is and what academia tells us that economics is. Well, I've been studying for three years and I've found that economics is very abstract. Occasionally there may be some attempt to relate it to the real world at the end. In some cases the real world is outright dismissed. You get to a higher level, you repeat the same stuff in a slightly different iteration. It never really seems to get any closer to solving any real world problem. What's in the curriculum now just isn't addressing the kinds of things that people really care about, like inequality, like uh, global climate change, like economic instability and crisis. Those things are really hitting people hard, and students come to our classes thinking they're going to learn about those things there, and they're not. The teaching of economics has sort of got stuck into as if it's um, far too much a preparation to become an academic, but most of them won't. So really what you need is an intelligent engagement with economics rather than a, a sort of deep technical training at undergraduate level. There's a tendency for economics to be rather abstract. It's fine, that's what economics is about, that's one of its strengths. But it turns out the details matter because they capture students' imaginations. They also matter because they're of practical significance. So we're talking about why the financial crisis happened. A lot of it wasn't because there was some fundamental principle of economics that was wrong. It was because actually the, the underlying incentives were extremely perverse and we weren't paying attention to that. Teachers, I think, were feeling a bit embarrassed because they could see that their students were really excited and animated by the big questions. The core project is designed to close three gaps. The gap between what we know as economists and what we teach, the gap between the big questions that students come to our classes with and what we teach, and between the traditional way we've taught and what's now available, which is much more interactive and individualised learning using electronic resources. And these resources are going to be available free online to students and to anyone else, in fact, anywhere in the world who's got access to the internet. So my feet will be in the fire. We're going to be teaching the materials at UCL in the autumn and then in the spring. It, it's also going to be used in a number of different places around the world, just to see how it works. And then we hope that other people will try it out for themselves. What I'd say to students who are dissatisfied with what they're getting, I would encourage them to see economics as a tremendous subject, as something that if they invest in acquiring the tools, then they will be able to use those tools to understand the questions that they're excited about. But they have to do that. And it's no good just learning how to talk about economics. You have to learn how to do it. I'm the chair of the Post-Crash Economic Society. We're a campaign to make economics education better, bringing in more pluralism, more critical thinking, more real-world analysis and more history of economic thought. We don't learn about how to help people and we don't learn about things like inequality in any sort of depth or, or sustainability in any sort of depth. And yeah, I was very disappointed um, when I came to university. What we teach in economics today determines what people think tomorrow. It's the analysis of tomorrow, it's the policy advice of tomorrow, it's the political discourse of tomorrow. Uh, you know, we can't just ignore this and think that it's it's just a little academic game, it matters.